Hi everyone, this is sort of like a recap of the five personality traits. I had a marvelous conversation with my little brother down under across the world and he um, had, a, had a good point, a point that many people have and that the data sort of supports. He's been to uh, Brazil and he's also been to Sweden with me and he says there is a difference and there's m people that agree with him and I do as well. There, there is a saying or was a saying it takes a village to raise a child and if you think about the context of being in a small village and raising a child and you yourself having to interact with the people in that village and as a child growing up in that and fessing or having to commit to the things you do because everyone sees what you do and everyone will talk to your parents and make you accountable for what you've done that is something that is not needed anymore in society because we can travel and move about more globally so the accountability part of it isn't there anymore and you might ask, ask yourself is that reason why narcissism is on the rise across the world is that why people behave like they do they don't take accountability for what they say or what they do to other people in a village you had to because everyone would judge you and that's your system one speaking the emotional system Sean had a, uh, a question because he still doesn't understand the concept of system one and system two system one is the emotional system in your brain that makes decisions for you how it's made up is that you draw conclusions or it draws conclusions really quickly effectively it doesn't need sugar or glucose in your brain to make those assumptions uh, and a good example of that, of that is driving out here I got stuck behind a behind I got stuck behind a, uh, a van sort of car those are very common these days four wheels larger cars and it was a 50 kilometer an hour road and the car stopped in the middle of the road and I didn't understand why and I got a bit frustrated like you have indicators it's to your left of your steering wheel use them tell me give me feedback on where you're going you're just standing there but that's my system one thinking because in front of this big car from your end for, on this end there was a smaller car which I can't see in the old days the cars were of equal size so you could see it but now you can't and that car was turning left so you see how that's a good example of system one drawing a quick conclusion like why and going towards neuroticism getting frustrated the pain circuit in my brain until my system two kicks in the logical part why did it kick in well this is not the first time this has happened so I learned that there's an alternative answer it can't be just like it stops in front of me there is something else to this story and that is me questioning myself Joachim you are wrong now why are you wrong there's more to this story well there is there was a car in front of it turning left so I calmed down like yeah that's a reasonable explanation and then the car turned left and I could see it that's the logical part questioning system one the emotional part which drew a quick conclusion and you need to train yourself to always ask yourself because that in itself is a behavior if you always rely on your emotions like I'm right because my emotions told me so well you can see the problematic thing about that you need to question yourself you need to train yourself not to be so effective and actually use your system two part your logical part of your brain and question and reason about your own conclusions you actually need to put some effort into that because that requires glucose in your brain 
And that is a problem if you're starving yourself, for example. Uh, ketosis gives you more energy, but I'm not sure whether or not that is that is actually working. Sean argues that he has more vivid and better imaginative thoughts when he's on a fast. I, for example, started my three-day fast this morning. Uh, I had my eggs and that'll be it. I won't be eating anymore until my birthday on Monday morning at uh, seven o'clock. Uh, so three days without food and water, not water, but food, without food. I'm doing water and coffee, that's it. Usually two cups of coffee will do it. Uh, and it'll clean out my um, mitochondria, makes me stronger, healthier, and I do that every quarter. Started last year, and it's a good thing. You might think that it's hard to fast go without water for three days, not very much. Uh, 24 hours is basically the worst, but I'll sleep through it tomorrow, so it's no biggie get it easy every time. You're just a bit afraid and anxious the first time you do it. But getting back to the, um, to the village uh, argument about that, in some cultures you only live in a small village and that makes you less neurotic, for example, less extroverted, less open and more stable because stable personality is when you're in the middle as we talked about before, and he has a name which I can't recall right now. Anyhow, growing up in a small community, you need to adhere to certain rules. In that regard, in previous time in history, uh, religion played a huge role, probably, in, for example, Christianity and the Ten Commandments. Those are legislation how you should and values how you should adhere to the world around you in your village and to others. There's things that you shouldn't do, but the religion and the rule book tells you how to understand it growing up and being an adult. When your emotions take over, the religion tells you and the values in the book and the Bible tells you that this is not good to do, so don't do that. And in the same regard, uh, living in a small community or a village Everyone around you will make sure that you adhere to the rules and the values of the community and make you commit and take responsibility for when you don't. The village will take care of that. And one good example of the, the good thing about a community and the village, since we are here, social animals, is that I had an idea about values and I saw it from my perspective and from all the science papers that I've read. However, Sean gave another perspective on my thoughts this morning. And that is his perspective in that he's actually lived in Thailand with the Muslims, for example, as a Westerner, and saw how they interact with each other and how they differ from the Western cultures. For example, Sweden, where I live in, and he's been here. In uh, Thailand, for example, it's... Uh, it's the man that cooks dinner and cooks the food, and that's a good thing in that culture. In Sweden, it's not. So talking to a friend of mine, a woman, and tell, telling her about the science paper that the University of Gothenburg made about, uh, and where they came to the conclusion that women in e equal countries, including Sweden, Norway, and Finland, where it's the worst, actually has become more uh, extroverted, more agreeable, more conscientious, more neurotic, and more openly. And they actually diverge upwards, and I'll show that in another video. Uh, and men has gone the other way. So men has become more introverted in these countries, uh, more disagreeable, more non-conscientious, not so effective, and uh, less neurotic, which is a good thing, and less open. And I can tell you in another video that that's not what a woman looks for in a man. They're not attracted to non-conscientious males. They're not attracted to introverted males. They're actually attracted to extroverted males and they're attracted to open males, which Swedish men are not. The little data shows. However, they are very, they are very um, 
concerned with taking that as some sort of truth. Even though the data shows it, the sample size is too small, even though statistically significant, it's too small to draw any greater conclusions. So hopefully we'll, we'll see more studies done on this on larger sample sizes that can reflect the population in a better manner. And that's a good way of thinking about personalities and humans in that are you right or are you wrong? Mostly you are wrong because I just showed you how different cultures are even though for example attractiveness for the different genders are exactly the same irregardless of which culture and day it is. It's the same and it's across time as well. When it comes to attractiveness uh, it goes back to Egyptian times when it comes to the hourglass form for example. Anyhow, that was a quick recap of uh, the morning talk with Sean. I just felt so happy about having such a deep conversation with Sean and good one, even though he was half drunk. Uh, he talks the best. <laughs> uh, it was a really, really constructive um, argument that he made and I had to process. Uh, you can read more about those comments that he made and what I responded to uh, under the videos if you want to. Other than that, I'll see you in the next one, hopefully. And if you like this one, subscribe, hit the bell button and put a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, put the thumb down and write a comment about what was worse about it. And don't subscribe if you don't want to. But for the ones that do watch me, I do appreciate it. Thank you so very much. I am glad that some of you actually feel that I'm giving you something and contributing to something. Um, on the last note, I would like to say that the one thing that stands out from these videos, according to my followers, the ones that are openly criticizing me and know me very well, is that I actually draw conclusions from myself and include my own personality in these talks. That gives you also a perspective of who another piece, another person can be. Uh, and I'm happy to oblige you because I'm not very scared of, of telling you my personality traits. However, if you are some sort of uh, combination of personality trait, I do know that through anxiety and the pain circuit, you will feel reluctant to show yourself as you are. And that's not your fault. That's connected to your neuroticism trait. Uh, the good thing for society is that you cannot hide your personality from other people. You are what you are. You should take accountability for it and change if you want to. If you don't want to, stand up and be what you are. Stand for it. Have that sort of core value as a spine that, that makes you who you are and work with that and see how that goes for you. If it doesn't, well, maybe you should change your values. Maybe they aren't good in to, to begin with. I know it's hard to change. I've done it myself. Sean pointed out to me and I confessed to it that I was in fact highly neurotic in my younger years, especially when I met him. I can tell you that insecurity has a 0.3 correlation towards neuroticism. So if you are insecure, you'll become neurotic. That's a very good indication. So if you spot someone that is acting insecurely, there's a fairly good possibility and probability that they in fact are high in neuroticism. It's up to them to deal with it, but uh, you can help them and you can feel compassionate for them and put that in perspective and know how they will act. And a good reference when it comes to neurotic, neurotics is that just like, have you ever pushed a dog into a corner and made it angry? You know what it'll do? It'll bite you. So will a neurotic person do due to the feeling that you make them feel. And I told you that in the emotions one. Anyhow, this is me uh, just babbling about and... Um, it's called Raliera in Swedish. I love it. I love being in the zone and talking about personalities and, and giving something back to the community. That's my highness in altruism.
anyhow thank you so very much for watching and i do hope you have a good day or had a great day this lovely friday cheers everyone <laughs>